So as we all know, today is uh, the day of the year we all look forward to, mm -hmm. to uh, honor and also assist Lord Jan Jagannath in his pastime of Ratha Yatra. So I'll, I chose one verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita, and this is from the Lord dancing at Ratha Yatra. And this is Madhya Leela chapter 13, verse number 119. So, uh, I'll just read the Bengali and then go right into the verse. E matta gora shami don he te la te li Swata te shaman me rake gora mahabali Thus, there was a sort of competition between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Jagannath in seeing who would lead. But Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so strong that he made Lord Jagannath wait in his car. Hmm. So the Rathiyatra is going on and there's this competition between Lord Jagannath and uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to see who would actually take the lead. Lord Chaitanya, we know, is uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Anohi Anya. He is Srimati Radharani's mood, but he is actually Krishna himself. So in his uh, leelas as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he mostly played in his role as his internal role, Srimati Radharani. <coughs> Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dwaita Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dwaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda So I'll read the translation once again. Thus there was a sort of competition between Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Jagannath in seeing who would lead. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so strong that he made Lord Jagannath wait in his car. Srila Prabhupada's purport. In his Anubhasya, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati describes the ecstasy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as follows. After giving up the company of the gopis in Vrindavan, Sri Krishna, the son of Maharaj Nanda, engaged in his pastimes at Dwarka. When Krishna went to Kurukshetra with his brother and sisters and others from Dwarka, he again met the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha Bhava Duti Suvalita, that is, he is Krishna himself assuming the part of Sri Mati Radharani in order to understand Krishna. Lord Jagannath Dev is Krishna, and Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Sri Mati Radharani. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is leading Lord Jagannath towards the Gundicha temple, corresponded corresponded to Srimati Radharani's leading Krishna towards Vrindavan. Sri Shetra Jagannath Puri was taken as the kingdom of Dwarka, the place where Krishna enjoys supreme opulence, but he was being led by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Vrindavan, the simple village where all the inhabitants are filled with ecstatic love for Krishna. Sri Shetra is a place of Aishwarya Leela, just as Vrindavan is the place of Madhurya Leela. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's following at the rear of the Rath indicated that Lord Jagannath, Krishna, was forgetting the inhabitants of Vrindavan. Although Krishna neglected the inhabitants of Vrindavan, he could not forget them. Thus, in his opulent Ratha Yatra, he was returning to Vrindavan. In the role of Srimati Radharani, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was examining whether the Lord still remembered the inhabitants of Vrindavan. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fell behind the wrath cart, Jagannath Dev, Krishna himself, understood the mind of Srimati Radharani. 
Therefore, Jagannath sometimes fell behind the dancing. <coughs> Sri Chaitanya Maha. Therefore, Jagannath sometimes fell behind the dancing. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to indicate to Srimati Radharani that he had not forgotten. Thus, Lord Jagannath would stop the forward march of the Rath and wait for the, at the standstill. <clears throat> In this way, Lord Jagannath agreed that without the ecstasy of Srimati Radharani, he could not feel satisfied. While Jagannath was thus waiting, Gorasundar Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his ecstasy of Srimati Radharani, immediately came forward to Krishna. At such times, Lord Jagannath would proceed ahead very slowly. Thus, competitive exchanges were all part of the love affair between Krishna and Srimati Radharani. In that competition between Lord Chaitanya's ecstasy for Jagannath and Jagannath's ecstasy for Srimati Radharani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emerged successful. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Statarine Pancha kalpa taru bhishya kripa sindhu pa evacha patitanam pavane vyo vaishnave vyo namaho namaha jai sri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda sri advaita gadadhar sivasadi gaur bhakta vrinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare so this verse, that, and purport especially, illustrates the actual meaning of uh, Jagannath Rati Yatra. Krishna was away from Vrindavan for many, many <clears throat> years. When Krishna was in Vrindavan, Kamsa, the powerful demon who was ruling Mathura, knew that Krishna would be the cause of his demise. And so, demon after demon, who had all been subjugated by Kamsa, was sent by Kamsa to Vrindavan to kill Krishna. But, of course, it's not possible to kill the Supreme Lord. And so, Krishna killing the demons was just like his you know, little side playing, you know, like sometimes kill, children play. No, that was just some fun that Krishna had, killing all of these demons. But the problem was that when the demons came into Vrindavan, they would cause fright and horror to many of the residents of Vrindavan. So Krishna didn't like that. And that would disturb him, to seeing his very dear, intimate, loving associates being put in this uh, frightful situation by these demons. And so, uh, this was going on, and then Kamsa, at one point, realized that uh, the only way I'm going to kill Krishna is that I'm going to have to bring him to Mathura, and set up a situation by which he'll be destroyed. He was thinking of Krishna as an ordinary person, or maybe just powerful. This is the way the materialists think, they cannot understand the power of God, nor the power of God's devotees. And so they estimate everything according to their limited understanding. But so Kamsa, he, had, he was doodlefully served by Akrura. Akrura, although he was a great devotee of the Lord, he stayed in Mathura and, and served Kamsa. And at one point, he developed such a relationship with Kamsa, that Kamsa trusted him implicitly, without a doubt. So he was thinking, I have to get Krishna to come to Mathura, but who's going to get him? Probably the only person that could do it was Akrura, because he knew that Akrura had some connection with Krishna, some affection for Krishna, but at the same time, 
he appears to be a dutiful servant of Kamsa. So Kamsa gave him the message, go to Vrindavan and bring Krishna to Mathura. And Kamsa's plan was to kill Krishna. And he had set up this powerful elephant, Kuvali Apita, I think his name was, to meet Krishna when he would come. And then he had some Brahmins that were going to curse Krishna with the various powerful mantras. If that didn't do, the elephant didn't work. And then finally, it was the wrestling mats with these big, powerful wrestlers. So he was sure he was going to be victorious. So, Kakura comes to Vrindavan. And uh, it's a beautiful story how Kakura is traveling to Vrindavan and he's absorbed and thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord. And he's just imagining in a very joyful way what it'll be like when I meet Krishna. <laughs> can't wait to meet Krishna. But he also has the mission. And so when he gets to Vrindavan, of course, he's greeted by Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda. They welcome him very nicely. And then finally, he meets Krishna. And that's a beautiful scene, how he offers beautiful prayers to Krishna. And then he gives the message, please come to Mathura. Actually, um, your devotees really want you there. Kamsa is very oppressive, and he's harassing all of the devotees, so please come and relieve the burden. So Krishna already knew he wanted to find some excuse to leave Vrindavan. He couldn't just leave, because the residents of Vrindavan had so much attraction and love for Krishna that even the thought not what to speak of him leaving. Even the thought of Krishna leaving was worse than death. <laughs> Their love was so deep and so, so continuous. So Krishna had to make some arrangements. So he did it through a Krura, but he used Kamsa to do it. <laughs> so Krishna, so a Krura comes, and then the plan is made that Krishna and Balaram would go to Mathura and meet with Kamsa, and then there would be a wrestling match. <laughs> so, so Krishna had an excuse to leave now. <laughs> but the residents of Vrindavan didn't like that. <laughs> so they were, when they found out, because they were boarding the, boarding the chariot that Akrari uh, had come, Everyone was getting ready, and everybody's wondering what's happening. Krishna's, oh my God, this is worse than death. So the gopis, especially, their love for Krishna is is immeasurable, and explains that the love for the gopis for Krishna cannot be described by anyone. Even Krishna can't even figure it out. It's so deep and so uh, so complete, and. So now he's getting on the chariot, and the gopis are thinking, he's not going to go. So they start falling in the front of the chariot, so the chariot could not roll. <laughs> and this is a, a very emotional scene, as the gopis are so doing everything to keep Krishna there. But then again, it was understood that Krishna was determined to go. So somehow or other, the scene what changes, and the gopis were removed from that position, and... Now, the gopis are angry. They're not angry at Krishna, but they're angry at Akura. Said it, they said, you are called Akura? Akura means not cruel. That's his main, the meaning of his name. Or kind. But I can see your name is not right. It's actually Kura. Cruel. <laughs> You've you created this cruelty in Vrindavan by taking Krishna away. So they cursed him. They actually cursed Akura. And then later on, he got stuck with some espionage where he actually went against Krishna in the whole story of the Samantaka jewel. And when he was in, in the intrigue with the other members who had decided to steal the Samantaka jewel from Satyavit, and then of course they killed him also. And Akura was involved in that. So although he was a great devotee, that curse caused him to fall down from his position. And he didn't really do anything wrong. 
But the, the power of the gopi's curse was so complete that he had to suffer. Of course, after that he came back. Now Krishna comes, and then of course, I mean, he uh, fights, kills the elephant, and then the Brahmins, their curses, can't do anything, and then Krishna enters into the wrestling arena with Balaram. And that's a beautiful scene, how different types of people, some came from Vrindavan and others, Nanda Maharaj and many of the cowherd boys, wanted to be with Krishna, so they couldn't not go to Vrindavan, so they came. And then that wrestling match, and then, because Krishna, he doesn't hate the demons, but he hated Kamsa. He had a special anger towards Kamsa, because Kamsa causes so much distress to many of the devotees, and Krishna just wanted to finish him off. <laughs> Devotees like that, you know. We devotees are non-violent, but when demons get killed, jai. <laughs> it's like not only jai, it's maha jai, you know. It really, it's jai ki jai. <laughs> and so, because and of course, when Krishna kills demons, the demons get liberation. So after the wrestling match, when everyone was in a chagrin seeing what it was happening that these two little boys from Vrindavan were fighting these powerful wrestlers. But yeah, Krishna played around with them for a little while and then finished them off. After both of the wrestlers were killed, and then uh, Kamsa's brothers, I think, or his cousins, or sons, either one, they came and they attacked Krishna and Balaram and he finished them off. <laughs> and then cracked Krishna is looking at Kamsa and he's sitting up on the dais, way up above everything, watching his home. Now he's frightened. And so he's doing whatever he's trying to send his armies at, after Krishna, but nothing's working. And Krishna runs up over there. And he grabs Kamsa, Kamsa and he just starts pounding him, just beating him, beating him and beating him. And uh, it was like, he just wanted, he was, Krishna was really angry. He was really angry. And then he takes Kamsa's lifeless body and drags it all over the, the wrestling arena and then just throws it. <laughs> Usually when Krishna kills the demons, it's fun, you know, and he enjoys that and the demons get nice death. <laughs> but with Kamsa, he really just finished, oh, he was so angry because he was such a, a terrible demon. <laughs> he had caused so many, you know, Devaki's sons were all killed by Kamsa. And that was, that was Krishna's brothers. Like, now there were so many atrocities that Kamsa had. So you know, Krishna was really angry. And now everyone thought, wow, Kamsa's dead now. And Ugrasena was installed on the throne. He was the rightful heir. And everyone thought, oh, now Krishna can come back to Vrindavan. But the residents of, of Mathura started to say to Krishna, all of the, the enemies of Ugrasena are going to cause us so much problems. They're the whole big army of Kamsa is still existing. So we will have no peace. They'll just attack us and we, we can't defend. So you have to stay here. <laughs> and Krishna and Balaram, it's nicely discussed. They're discussing, we really want to go back to Vrindavan. But how can we go back? Because we leave all of these, all of our, all of these devotees defenseless against Kamsa's armies. So he stayed, and then of course Devaki and Vasudeva were also there, and they also wanted to spend more time with Krishna because they had never had that opportunity to really be with Krishna. When Vasudeva took Krishna to Vrindavan after Krishna was born from the jail cell. They were always thinking, and they had that maternal affection, paternal affection for Krishna that was so deep. And here was a chance to show it. And so also to please Devaki and Vasudev, the Lord stayed. And then, of course, Krishna was uh, helping and he built up his army, the Yadu dynasty, and his army was gradually building up. So. 
And then gradually, gradually, but then more and more demons were being coming after Krishna. And that was Pondraka, and it was Keshi, and it was Salva, Shalva, and it was Dantravarka, one after another. Because Krishna's mission is pravitranayam sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam. He's there to kill the demons and also to give pleasure to the devotees. So he wants to finish all of the prominent demons, and then he's thinking, I want to go back to Vrindavan. I want to be with the residents of Vrindavan. They want to be with me also. And so he's in that mood of trying to wipe out the demons as fast as he can so he could get back. But, you know, many of these demons were quite expert at fighting, and so there were so many battles and so many situations where Krishna had to spend years and years finding the demons and killing the demons. And then, you know, there was, there was a threat in Vrindavan that now Krishna was not in Vrindavan, so many of the Kamsa's uh, persons who wanted revenge on Krishna would go and harass the, de the residents of Vrindavan and Krishna was not there. So Krishna decided to, bring, to, to build the Dwarka fort. So he built this fort called Dwarka, which is, it was in the, on the seashore, seaside. I don't know exactly the geographical place. And then one night, he transferred all of the residents of Vrindavan into Dwarka to protect them and not be killed by the demons in, that were attacking Vrindavan still. And so now Krishna is in Dwarka, and he has many of his residents in there, but many of the residents took on different forms as they appeared. All of the queens, and this, of course, this is a very, this is very detailed, and let's try to kind of condense it down a little, but all of the queens, or actually all of the gopis, the 16,100 prominent queens, or 16,108 gopis who had took queen form in order to be with Krishna in that manifestation. And that's mentioned, Shivaram Maharaj mentions that in his, his series, the Vrindavan series. How the gopis also feeling separation from Krishna couldn't withstand that. So they all left their bodies in Vrindavan and actually re reappeared in, in Dwarka as queens. And uh, Radharani became Satyabhama. And uh, uh, was it uh, Chandravali? She became Rukmini. So many of the prominent queens were the prominent devotees also in Vrindavan. And then Krishna married those uh, prominent queens, which was Satyabhama and Rukmini. Who else? Uh, or was some of the Satya was another one, Kalindi, and many of the other. He had eight principal wives. Well, actually, they were gopis, but they reappeared as queens. <laughs> and so now, um, and, but still Krishna's thinking, while he was in Dwarka, he was thinking, I have to go back to Vrindavan. The webs is of I just have to be with the residents of Vrindavan. And so he's he's in Dwarka, but he's always thinking of Vrindavan. So many of the queens they didn't they didn't uh, have the opportunity to be with Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan. Now they're in that different role of Aishwarya Bhav, not Madhurya. So they, they don't have their recollection, although they are transformed into the, from the gopis into the queens still, they're in the mood of the queens because when Radharani and the gopis they expand, they expand into the Lakshmis and in, in, in Vaikuntha and to the queens in Dwarka. So in the queens, they wanted, because Krishna kept saying, gopi, 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 yasoda, 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 Radha, 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 when he would sleep and he would just be in this mood of just calling out to the residents of Vrindavan and just at any time, but mostly in his sleep. And then the queens would hear that and they would think, well, he's with us, but he's not with us. <laughs> and so they approached uh, Rohini, which was the mother of Balaram. She was there in Dwarka. And they said, Rohini, 
what is it about the residence of Vrindavan? And what were the pastimes that Krishna was performing when he was in Vrindavan? You're the only one that were there at the time. Can you tell us? She said, well, hmm. If I tell you and Krishna finds out, he's going to leave immediately. Because <laughs> when he hears me speaking about his leelas in Vrindavan, he's gone. <laughs> he's not going to be here anymore. So the queens were persistent. So they said, let's make a plan. Okay, so they made a plan. So they came to one assembly house, and all the queens, many of the queens, not all of them came. And Rohini was to speak, and they put Subhadra at the door to guard. And if Krishna comes, then she's supposed to warn. And that way Rukmi, Rohini would stop the narration. So they're there, and Rohini is starting to speak. And Subhadra, is, she's at the door, but she's also listening. And she's hearing. And she starts to go into ecstasy, just hearing about the pastimes of Krishna and Vrindavan. And so her hands coil into her body. Her feet do the same. Her eyes get big and she faints. Boom. Nobody's at the door <coughs> guarding anymore. And nobody knows that what happened to Subhadra. So the queens are absorbed listening to Rohini, and Rohini is absorbed speaking about Krishna. So after some time, Balaram comes and he sees Subhadra. What's wrong with Subhadra? Said, oh, my mother, she's speaking. What she's, oh, she's talking about our pastimes in Vrindavan. Oh, let me listen. So he gets excited and he starts listening. And as he's listening, he gets some of the same ecstasies and he starts thinking, ah, oh, yes, Vrindavan. His eyes get his arms coil into his body, legs do the same time, boom, Balaram's finished. He's out, unconscious. <laughs> and so now nobody's guarding the door, of course, when Subhadra went. And then Krishna comes, and Krishna starts to come, and he sees Balaram and Subhadra there, and he oh, my mother, because Rohini was the mother of Krishna and Balaram. That was the mood. That even though she was considered to be the mother of Balaram, she, she played the role of mother to Krishna also, because Krishna had two mothers, Yasoda and Rohini and Vrindavan. So now he's listening, and he gets, his eyes get big, Jagannath eyes. <laughs> his arms and legs coil into his body faints. <laughs> so this particular pastime is the way to illustrate those transcendental forms of Jagannath, Baladeva, and Subhadra. Because the actual meaning of those particular forms are the Lord's mood of loving separation for the residents of Vrindavan. So that is actually the meaning of the forms of Jagannath, Baladeva, and Subhadra. He's actually Krishna but he's in that mood of a separation. Now Krishna can't, can't withstand not going to Vrindavan. So he, he decides, I'm going to leave. And so a plan was made, and Balaram and Subhadra were also want to go. So they're going to lead Krishna back to Vrindavan. Of course, there's a very beautiful scene how the residents of Dwarka didn't want Krishna to leave. That's all explained in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. Now Krishna's on his way to Vrindavan, and he's in ecstasy, thinking of the residents of Vrindavan. So the whole pastime of, of us pulling Jagannath is bringing Jagannath, Baladev, Subhadra from Dwarka to Vrindavan. And that's the meaning of Rathayatra. So you see, when if you go to Jagannath Puri, there is the Jagannath Puri Mandir. That is considered to be Dwarka or Vaikuntha, and the Gundicha temple, which is 2.3 kilometers down the road, is actually none different than Vrindavan. So the whole scene of Rathayatra is to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. Sri Sri Radha Gokulananda Ki Jai.
So when we're performing this pastime, we're actually entering into a very intimate and very deep loving pastime with Krishna. It's not just about pulling the ropes and chanting and dancing. That is, of course, the essence of, the, of our bhakti. But the mood is to try in, our, in a prayerful way, Krishna, please come back to Vrindavan. And then sananasmati, that it, it's understood that the heart of the devotee is non-different than Vrindavan. So we, the idea of pulling the ropes is that you're bringing Krishna into your heart <laughs> by, the, by the enthusiasm and by your devotion in pulling the ropes and then, of course, dancing and chanting. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was performing this particular pastime, as mentioned here. It was a competition. Uh, the gopis actually came to Kurukshetra at one point to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. But when the gopis saw Krishna in Kurukshetra, and he was dressed with armor and surrounded by military soldiers, their ecstasy dropped. <laughs> Although it was the same Krishna, it wasn't the same Krishna. Because they, they love Krishna in that mood as a cowherd boy in Vrindavan, and not as the soldier in, in, in Kurukshetra. So Radharani's happy to see Krishna, but at the same time she's trying to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. So it's interesting, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says something quite amazing. He said that Radharani's anxiety when she's at Kurukshetra is at the height. She's in such anxiety that those who serve Radharani in the mood of bringing Radha and Krishna back together in Vrindavan, that is the highest form of service, bringing Krishna out of Kurukshetra and back to Vrindavan. He explains that in one article. So he says, it's not the separation in Vrindavan that's the highest, it's the separation in Kurukshetra that's even higher. <laughs> so it's amazing how Bhakti Siddhanta has understood that in terms of Radharani's mood of separation has reached such a point of unbearability that anyone who engages in devotional service in the mood of bringing Radharani and Krishna back to Vrindavan in the mood of bringing her out of bringing him out of Kurukshetra, he said that's the highest form of service to Srimati Radharan, even higher than Vrindavan. It's interesting because her her anxiety knows no limit. And so in that in that pastime, so when we're in front and we're dancing and chanting in front of the cart, our enthusiasm is our a way to show our love for Krishna that we want him, bring him. And so you'll see that the cart stops and the cart goes. <laughs> Jagannath once, sometimes he stops just to see the dancing of his devotees. Or sometimes he wants to see if they, maybe the ecstasy has dropped down and he wants to wait until it comes back up and then he, he decides to go again. That's Jagannath. We were in Jagannath Puri in the year 2001 for the Rath Yatra with many of the devotees from Chaupati and uh, in Bombay. We had 4,000 devotees. So well, we were there for the Rath Yatra and it's a really amazing celebration. If you haven't been, find some time before you depart this world and go to Jagannath Puri for Rath Yatra. You'll never forget that experience. It's so powerful and so deep in bhakti. You might say, well, 1 million, 1.2 million people. Oh my God. It's like that. <laughs> but if you go with the devotees in an organized way, you can get some special arrangements. And we did that. So when the uh, carts... They build the carts, and when they build the carts, it takes them 700 trees to build those three carts. And there's a special kind of tree that is used for that. And after, you know, the carpenters, they carve the carts out of the trees, 
and they make these beautiful carts. And the carts are on the road even before the Jagannath Rati Yatra. And you can watch them as they're building the carts. And they're also painting the carts. Each, there's a different family that are servants of Lord Jagannath that they do a particular color on the cart. So one family will do all the yellow, another family will do the green, another family will do the red, another family will do the blue, like that. And they have each of the families that are servants of the Lord uh, have a particular service that is uh, fixed, and they do that service every year for the for Jagannath. So we were watching. Now the carts are built, the Rathiyatra day has come, now Jorganath has to come out of his temple. So around the carts, the police set the, what is called, they call it a cordon. It's just a big circle with police all around. You can't get inside, and there's, there's some room in, inside where the carts are, and even in the front. Unless you have a special pass given to you by the city of, Je of Pori. So people, some VIPs, they always get these passes. But we snuck in. <laughs> we did a little, you know, and we also knew some of the pujaris there who were servants of Jagannath. So they snuck us inside so we could get into the immediate area. Now Jagannath's coming out. And for him to get on his cart, it's a whole festival. First Balaram comes out. And there's like singing, there's cartel players, there's drum players, and there's fire twirlers. And they have these devotees, they have these sticks, big sticks with rags tied at the end, and they dip it into oil, and they light it on fire. And they take it and they twirl it, and they throw it up in the air, and it spins, and they catch it. And then they do all of these tricks with this. And then this is like part of the entertainment. We were watching. There was one girl. She was about, I don't know, 18 years old, young, real young. And she was twirling the fire and rolling it on the ground at the same time. She was rolling and twirling it over her head and catching it. And she had been doing that since she was a little girl. They train her in that way. So that's her service to Jagannath every year. She does this really performance. So you see some of the most beautiful arrangements to welcome the Lord. And finally the deities come out one by one. It starts about eight o'clock in the morning and by one o'clock the deities are on the cart. So it takes about four or five hours. And then, then the, the VIPs come and the mayor comes and all of them, they come up and they, they do puja to the deities and they offer garlands and so there's a, another big ceremony that goes on. So that takes another hour, hour and a half. And finally, it's like midday already, and now it's time for the Roth cart to go. So we went, this, and this year it was, it was rainy that year. It was during the rainy season. So it was a little bit difficult. But we were there in front of the carts. We were singing and dancing and there's an announcer who places himself above everybody. He can, and he speaks in Orient and he describes what's going on. It's being broadcast all over the world in different languages. And so then now Balaram's on the cart, Jag, uh, Subhadra's on her cart, Jagannath's weapon, the uh, chakra, that's out there. Now Jagannath has to come. So they take out Jagannath, they're carrying Jag and Jagannath, he's in ecstasy. And they get him to the base of the cart. <clears throat> now the cart's really high up. I mean, if you're standing up, to even the base of the cart will be over your head. And they have a long plank with some like trees that they cut to use as steps that are going up. So now they, these, these 20 men, these guys, these guys are really big. <laughs> And they got ropes and they're carrying Jagannath. They get him to the cart. Now they got to get him on. So everything seemed to be going okay until Jagannath got to the base of the cart. And so now they're trying to move him up the cart. Nothing's happening. 
And we were inside the court, and we were right there next to the cart watching. And uh, so Jagannath's not moving. <laughs> He's not moving. They're pulling, they're struggling, they're straining. And this is all being announced, you know, to the world by these announcers. And uh, so we're thinking, what's happening? And then all of a sudden, Jagannath lays down flat. He goes on his back. And now they're holding him that way, and they still can't move him. <laughs> He's not going. <laughs> and, uh, and Jagannath's big. He's like two meters tall <laughs> and about one meter wide. He's huge. And uh, they're trying to, they can't move him. And so the announcer, he jumps into this whole program. He wants to get involved. So he says, Jagannath, Jagannath. We heard this later because we didn't understand Orion. But later they told us, he said, Jagannath, Jagannath, get on your cart. Your devotees are waiting. Come on, get on the cart. No time to sleep. He said that to Jagannath. <laughs> Jagannath he's, he's like taking it easy, you know. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, at one point, and I, was, I saw this, the deity went right up. It was like no effort. And I, we, later on, we talked, we, we talked through our contacts there. How'd you guys do that? We said, we don't do anything. He does everything. <laughs> we just act like we're doing something. <laughs> but he, he does all the movements. No, Jagannath's on the cart. Okay, now the Ras ready to go. Balaram's carts first, because the whole, the whole pastime is Balaram and Subhadra are leading Jagannath, Krishna, back to Vrindavan. So they're first. So Balaram's cart goes first, and he's going down Grand Road. And then Balaram decides, hmm, I'm going to play and do a little pastime of my own. <laughs> so he starts drifting over to the side. And they got these big ropes, and people are pulling, and the police are saying, you know, pull up this way, move him this way, this way. And everybody's just shouting, and uh, Balaram's still going over. He doesn't want to hear anything. He goes over to the side, and he's moving sideways. And then he goes all the way off the road, and he goes up against the electrical pole, and the car stops. Can't move it. <laughs> Now, there's a hundred men on the cart, and they're not going to get off. <laughs> That's just the way it is in India, you know. <laughs> it's like that. And so there's no brakes. There's no steering. The cart's up against this pole. What to do? So the only thing to do is to remove the pole. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what they did. They called him a municipal man. A guy climbs up the pole, un unhooks the electrical wires from the top, and then they get these picks and shovels, and they dig the pole out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. And they try that in, in London, see what happens. <laughs> and so now Balaram's, they pull Balaram back to the center. And so then the, the wrath is going on. We're at Jagannath's car. We're doing kirtan there. And then Balaram decides to do it again. <laughs> so again, he starts going off to the side again. And this is towards the end of the, 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 the parade. And they have all of these shops where all of these uh, uh, people come and they set up their little wares and they sell trinkets and all kinds of the souvenirs to people. And they put it up that same day, so it's just like, corrugated tin and some blanks and some, you know, cardboard. They make a little shop out of it. So Baladev goes up against this man's shop and stops. <laughs> so then they have to take the man's shop down. <laughs> and the man who owned the shop, he thought, this is so special. I get to offer my shop to Jagannath, to Baladev. <laughs> He was kind of happy. We really learned all of this later out from some of the people who were there. And then, of course, and that particular year was a little bit different than most years because most of the years Jagannath completes the wrath on the same day. But this year, for some reason, he didn't. He kept stopping, and we kept doing kirtan, and his cart was hardly moving. People were saying that... He wanted to see the kirtan, so he, instead of going, he was just watching. And the announcer was saying, and we heard also that, he said, 
we can't believe it, folks, but these devotees, they're like, they're, they're like Lord Chaitanya, come again, to dance and chant in front of Rathiyatra for the pleasure of Lord Jagannath. And they were praising us. We had 4,000 devotees came. And so the rule is that when the sun goes down, the cart stops, wherever the carts are. Though they don't, go, they don't roll past sunset, and they, end, they begin only in sunrise. So then that night, there's puja and all kinds of worship through the night. And the next morning, when sunrise starts, then the parade finishes. So the second day, we had the opportunity to pull the carts. And that day, and then when they get to the Gundicha temple, the carts line up, three of them in a row. And that happens in the evening. And then there's a festival of, again, worship, garlands, and people coming on and offering various types of offerings to Jagannath, Baladeva, and Subhadra. And then after that goes out for a few hours, then they take the deities off the cart. And that's a beautiful, and then again, the fire throwers and then the cartel players and the drum beaters, and it's, they, they, they're really good when they play the drums. They put, yeah, that's just a, you know, not that I'm not that good at, but anyway, they play so perfectly, all together, and there's like a hundred of them on on wampers, a hundred of them on drums, and they all play simultaneously and all synchronized so nicely, and then the fire twirlers, and then they take the deities off the cart. Baladev goes first, and then Subhadra and Jagannath, and then they go into the Gudicha temple. And that is Krishna reaching Vrindavan. And then the Lord stays there for about a week. And then after the week, they have the return Rathayantra, which is very beautiful. Last year, something really amazing happened. I don't know if you saw it, but it was raining like crazy. And the carts were right in front of the Gudinsha temple, ready to go in. And it was pouring rain. But it was rain everywhere except the Jagannath's cart. There was no rain there. There was rain all around, uh, back of his cart, all around, right on Jagannath's cart, in that area. You can see it's on, vid on video. There's no rain. <laughs> it's amazing. Jagannath, I guess, wanted to get some of his devotees to come. And it's pouring. I mean, not just raining. It's really pouring. But right where Jagannath was, not a drop. <laughs> so it's quite mystical when you go there. You can see some of the most amazing things happen. Um, and Jagannath conducts the whole thing, as the devotees told us, that he controls all at all. We simply try to assist him in his pastime, that's all. So it's a wonderful chance to actually honor the Lord and be part of this Ratha Yantra. Srila Prabhupada wanted to give this this special pastime of the Lord all around the world. So, And we are criticized also by some of the echelon in Jagannath Puri for doing Ratha Yatra outside of Puri. They say it should, that's the only place it should be. But Prabhupada started it, and because of that, millions and literally millions of people who would never come to our temples got the chance to, you know, get darshan of the Lord. Because Jagannath Ratha Yatra is really for people in general. And for, for us to preach to them by giving them a chance to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead on his wrath cart, where they can, you know, if they want, they can offer things to the deities. Of course, they do that in India. And we do our carts in, in Rathiyatras in India, wherever you do, people run up and they're just handing us bananas and different kinds of fruit and sweets and money and everything. It's constant. Uh, the Western culture is not so much attuned to the, the mood of Rathiyatra, but 
But people can at least, they see the Lord in that beautiful form. And if they simply see that, then they're guaranteed a human birth in their next life, simply by seeing or even appreciate it. Uh, so it's a wonderful festival. And uh, I don't want to take up too much time because I know it's a little tight on the schedule. But uh, chat, dance, and have a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments? Yes, anywhere? Yes, Mataji. <laughs> Krishna to go back to Vrindavan. Yeah. So, uh, like, I heard that the gopis pull the chariot like back to Vrindavan. So, Krishna actually goes back to Vrindavan again, right? I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't remember. Where, did you read that somewhere? That he, they, he actually, they, they're feeling unhappy because Krishna is in Dwarka. I mean, he's in Kurukshetra and he's dressed in the military. They want to come. So they came to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. I think you, what you said is correct, yeah. He comes, but then he leaves again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is that prayer by, uh, I think the prayer you're referring to is mentioned here in this same pastime where it says, and this was recited by by Madhavendra Puri, just at the time. Let me see, it's, it's right here. And it describes very pitiable what the gopis were. Experience. See, there's that one. Aye, none down. What is it? Oh, yeah. It's coming somewhere in this area here. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful prayer describing Radharani's ecstasy and feeling separation for Krishna. And she can't. Be happy unless Krishna actually returns to Vrindavan. Can't seem to find it. It's a beautiful, it's, it was recited by Madhavendra Puri when he was leaving the body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, right? Radharani is pleading with Krishna. She's saying, you know, your mother, your father, and many of the other residents of Vrindavan, they're dying. So please come back. And she's trying to speak on behalf of them also. Thank yeah, you, Yeah, thank you, yeah. Yes, Mataji. Mm -hmm. Something that I personally struggle with on festival days in general is maintaining enthusiasm throughout the day. Mm. So if you could kindly share any thoughts about how to sustain our enthusiasm. Chant and dance. <laughs> <laughs> At least chant. Chant enthusiastic. If we stay in the kirtan, even if we can't stay in continuously, we should at least stay in the, mo in the area of the kirtan and always be hearing the kirtan, that'll keep us somewhat connected to the whole pastime. Yeah, of course we meet our friends and we want to chit-chat also. <laughs> That's there too, but... So let's... We have to understand that it, it's for the pleasure of the Lord. And if we try to keep that mood that I'm singing for the pleasure of the Lord, I'm dancing for the pleasure of the Lord, 
I'm pulling the ropes for the pleasure of the Lord. And that, that gives us a uh, clear perspective of the mood that we need to adopt in order to stay enthusiastic like that. But I think the kirtan is a sustaining thing that keeps us connected. And usually in, in London, there's how many kirtans going on in front? One or two, sometimes three different kirtans. It's such a long procession. Yeah. Nice. Yes, we have a couple of hands here. Our brahmachari friend over there. The, the color is becoming rare. <laughs> okay. Hmm? Beat Jagannath? Oh, he's talking about the uh, hair punch me, that pastime? That's the... Re that's when he's coming on the chariot. When he's coming onto the chariot? Yeah. They're beating him? No. And they don't, like <laughs> They're beating the drums. Not him. <laughs> No, nobody's beating Jagannath, that's for sure. Nobody would even think about that. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Maharaj, I had a question regarding what is the best service we can do on Rath Yatra? Chant and dance. <laughs> <laughs> Enthusiastically. Because <laughs> that, that, with, with that spiritual energy coming out and people on the side, they can become affected. They hear that and they actually become attracted. It happened here many years ago. It was one, I think it was Kripa Mayaprabhu who was leading the kirtan. And one lady from the side, she was just an onlooker, she came running right into the middle of the kirtan and said, what are you singing? What are you singing? I can't stop crying. Yeah, she had some, this emotional experience just hearing the, the holy name. It was something she had never experienced before. And it was working in such a way she couldn't understand anything, but she was just crying. <laughs> so yeah, so we can, our enthusiasm will spill out into the area where people are. And that's the idea, to somehow or other give them an experience. <laughs> yes. Can you tell us what does Jagannath Baladeva Subhadra do in the Gandicha temple when mm -hmm. they are there? Can I tell you about? What are, they, uh, what are Jagannath Baladeva Subhadra doing in the Gandicha temple when they come there? They are staying there for some time. Mm, that's Krishna and Vrindavan. We are not allowed inside of that temple if you have a pale looking body. <laughs> if you have that nice suntan, then you can go in. <laughs> not a suntan, but <laughs> us pale guys can't go in. <laughs> so, of course, they have, they have programs there and they, they do worship. The worship goes on for the whole week. Various offerings and like that. But I've never been in and we're not a, you know. We hear that's just worship goes on like that. He, 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 they, they, they meet with the residents of Vrindavan there? Hmm? They, I guess they meet with resident, residents of Vrindavan there in the temple. Well, that's the mood. The Gondicha temple represents Vrindavan, so Krishna is returning to Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we reached the end. Oh, yeah, one more. Okay. The return Rath Yatra pastime. Hmm. There is a pastime called Hare Panchami. I think that happens at the return. I'm not sure when. Where uh, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, she's in the Jagannath temple, which represents Dwarka. And she's angry because her husband has left. So she sends out her servants and then Krishna's with the cowherd boys 
and then with his servants, and then the girls attacked the boys, and they beat up the boys. It's, it's, a, it's, a, good, good, it's a good pastime for those ladies who really want to do that, but... <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, that's a wonderful pastime. Krishna's servants get beat up by Lakshmi's servants, and then she chastises Jagannath for leaving like that. So it's it's mentioned also in here here Panchamitas, a particular delineation, and then Jagannath is and then he gets tied up and she drags him back. <laughs> Every every husband listens to his wife. It's true. You want to hear the story? It's a fact, yeah. So there's Birbal and Akbar. Akbar, not Akbar. Akbar. He's the king. And Birbal says to Akbar, Hey, Akbar. Every husband listens to his wife. Akbar says, Well, that's mostly true, but not everyone. Mirbal says, without a doubt, everyone. <laughs> so he's doubtful. And Mirbal said, all right, make an experiment. Call all of the residents from the king, kingdom and set up two lines. One, the, lines, the line here for those who listen to the wife and those, another line for those who don't. Okay, so the experiment's going and people are coming and all the men are standing in the line that they listen to their wife. Nobody's going into the other line. So Akbar's, you know, he's hoping there's at least, you know, one. Birbal said, I told you. And finally, one man stands in the other line and Akbar gets a little enthusiastic. Wow, one. see, I told you. Birbal says, no, ask him why he's standing there. So he goes over and asks him, why are you standing there? My wife told me to. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> so just in case you weren't sure. <laughs> okay, I better end on that. Thank you very much. Shri Jagannath Rathi Yatri Ki Jai. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai.